For the Second World War to begin and to end, there had to be leaders capable of rising to the occasion. The key to ending this bloody war was the union of three leaders, none other than the presidents of the United Kingdom, the United States, and the Soviet Union. They risked their lives and the lives of their citizens to end the fascist regimes, primarily in Germany, but also in others like Italy. Today, in this new video on military history, we're going to tell you about the deaths of the leaders who were on the side of the Allies, like Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin, but also of those who were in the Axis, Mussolini, and Hitler. You'll be surprised to learn that the circumstances of their deaths vary drastically based on the impact of their lives. As soon as Germany invaded Poland, England was one of the countries that declared war on Hitler's nation. Leading the political scene of the United Kingdom was none other than Winston Churchill. Upon assuming his position as Prime Minister, in his inaugural speech to the House of Commons, he sincerely said, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. Thus, at the age of 66, he led his nation in the fight against the Nazi enemy. He was the commander-in-chief of the army, had direct control of politics and carried out military operations. As a leader in every sense of the word, he supervised every aspect of the English war effort. Furthermore, he knew that it was impossible to defeat a mortal enemy like Hitler with a single nation, so he didn't hesitate to form an alliance with the United States and the Soviet Union, despite being a fierce critic of the communist regime. The enemy was one, and if holding one's nose was necessary to rid the world of Nazism, he would do it regardless of his pride. During his government, Churchill was directly responsible for some of the most notable military maneuvers of the conflict, one of them being the miracle of Dunkirk. This was the codename for Operation Dynamo, during which over 300,000 French, British, Belgian, and Canadian troops were rescued from the German invasion from the beaches near Dunkirk between May 29th and June 4th, 1940. Thanks to the implementation of this operation, 338th, 226 soldiers were evacuated, of which 225,680 were British combatants. By combining military efforts and civilian society, the miracle of Dunkirk became a reality. This is just one of the feats Churchill accomplished during World War II, but it's enough to understand why he was such an important political figure in his country. The display of mourning after his death attested to how much the English people loved him. Sir Winston Churchill died on January 24, 1965, at the age of 90. After the stroke he suffered on January 15th, he spent most of his last days in a coma. It is known that his last words were to his son-in-law, Christopher Soames, I'm so bored with it all. It wasn't his first stroke, and he no longer had the patience to endure. His was the first state funeral in the United Kingdom for someone who was not a member of the royal family. The event lasted four days, and its organization was part of an exhaustive plan known as Operation Hope Not, ordered by Queen Elizabeth II. Planning had begun in 1953, when during his second term as Prime Minister, Churchill suffered a stroke, an episode that didn't prevent him from living 12 more years considering he also suffered another stroke and a critical pneumonia. The event lasted four days, and his body lay in Westminster Hall, the palace that houses the UK Parliament, before being taken to St. Paul's Cathedral for the funeral. From there, the body was transported along the River Thames to Waterloo Station. Finally, he was buried in St. Martin's Church. 
Another outstanding leader of this period of history was Franklin D. Roosevelt, the President of the United States. He led his country at the time when, following the aerial attack on Pearl Harbor, it ceased to be a neutral nation and joined the conflict as part of the Allied group. Unlike Churchill, who passed away in the 1960s, this leader died before the end of the Second World War. Just months before his passing, he had taken office for his fourth term as president. An unprecedented feat that has not been repeated in the country, at least not until today. He was only 63 years old, but his health was increasingly deteriorating due to various conditions, very high blood pressure, heart failure, and possibly melanoma. Added to this was the fact that he had polio in his childhood, so he was weakened by post-polio syndrome, meaning he lived with constant muscle fatigue. It must also be noted that his emotional state also affected his health, as for 12 years he had overseen the country, which went through the recovery from the Great Depression and, of course, World War II. On April 12, 1945, Roosevelt suffered an attack at his Warm Springs retreat home, while chatting with his friends, he collapsed and never regained consciousness. His wife of 40 years, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, wrote years later in her biography that, although it was a terrible blow, there was somehow no opportunity to think of it as a personal loss, like the loss of a husband. Instead, it was the pain of all those Americans for whom this man had been a symbol of conviction and strength. The morning after his death, Roosevelt's body was placed in a coffin covered with a flag and loaded onto the presidential train for the journey back to Washington. Along the route, thousands of people flocked to the tracks to pay their respects, imagining the affection for a man whom the people had chosen for four consecutive terms. On April 14th, a funeral was held at the White House, and then Roosevelt was transported by train to Hyde Park, the place of his birth. Finally, he was buried, according to his wish, in the rose garden of his estate in Springwood. In the following images, you can see how the citizens of his country bid farewell to him. In life, Roosevelt was a fundamental part of the agreements that led to the Allied group emerging victorious in the Second World War. Among hundreds of strategies, his alliance with Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin, though unlikely, was crucial in changing the course of history. We invite you now to learn about the history of Joseph Stalin, who initially was closer to Germany than being part of the Allies. In August 1939, following the failure to establish an Anglo-Franco-Soviet alliance, Stalin's country signed a non-aggression pact with Nazi Germany, dividing their spheres of influence in Eastern Europe. This pact allowed the Soviet Union to regain some of the former territories of the Russian Empire. However, in 1941, Germany violated the pact by invading the Soviet Union with Operation Barbarossa. This was the beginning of the end between the two countries, but also the start of Stalin's relations with the Allies. This alliance was so strong that the leader participated in high-level meetings, including those of the Big Three with Churchill and Roosevelt in Tehran in 1943 and Yalta in 1945. The latter meeting left an audio-visual record that is one of the most important moments in world history. As a wartime leader, Stalin maintained close control over the Soviet army. Battlefronts, military reserves, and the wartime economy. Eventually, the Red Army advanced through Europe from 1944 and captured the capital of the Third Reich after the Battle of Berlin in May 1945. Like the other presidents mentioned in the video, the death of this leader did not go unnoticed. 
Joseph Stalin's health began to deteriorate towards the end of the Second World War. He had atherosclerosis as a result of smoking, suffered a mild stroke in May 1945, and a severe heart attack in October of the same year. Like Churchill, he lived for a few more years after those scares. However, everything comes to an end. During his last three days of life, Stalin kept his entire country in suspense. On February 28, 1953, the Soviet leader and a small number of his inner circle were gathered for an evening of entertainment and drinks. After the guests left, at around 4 a.m. on March 1st, Stalin retired to his private room with strict instructions not to be disturbed the next day. He spent the entire day and his employees heard no sound until around 11 p.m. when his housekeeper, concerned about him, cautiously entered his room. She found him lying on the floor dressed in pajama pants and a shirt. He was unconscious, breathing heavily, and unresponsive to attempts to wake him up. Being already March 2nd, a group of medical experts was summoned to examine Stalin. Based on the examination, which revealed very high blood pressure and right-sided hemiplegia, they concluded that the president, who had a known history of hypertension, had suffered a hemorrhagic stroke. Over the next two days, he received a variety of treatments, which, in an attempt to lower his blood pressure, included the use of leeches on his neck and face. However, no matter how hard they tried, Stalin's condition continued to deteriorate, and he died at 9.50 p.m. on March 5, 1953. For his death, the Soviet Union held a state funeral in Moscow on March 9th. Additionally, four days of national mourning were declared. As you can see, the deaths of these three leaders were accompanied by warm farewells. Whether by their nations or their people, these three personalities departed in glory. In contrast, for the presidents of Italy and Germany, Axis countries, things were different. To begin with, neither Hitler nor Mussolini died of natural causes. Stay with us to learn about their lives, but above all, their endings. Although both shared the same ideology, their countries were far from being in the same conditions. Mussolini understood that peace was essential for Italy's well-being and that a long war could be disastrous. However, he was concerned that the Germans would be the only victors of World War II. Due to his clear disadvantage and limited room for relevant decision-making, Mussolini observed Hitler's war progress with bitterness and alarm. From the beginning, Things went wrong for Italy, and Mussolini's opportunistic hopes for a quick victory soon faded. The situation was so evident that soon the president of Italy was forced to face the fact that he was the junior partner in the Axis alliance. By the fall of 1943, he was reduced to being the leader of a German puppet state. He also faced Allied advances and an increasingly violent internal conflict with the partisans. Two years later, in 1945, the Allies broke through the last German defenses in northern Italy, and a general uprising of the partisans seized the cities. Mussolini's situation became simply unsustainable, so he fled to Milan to try to reach Switzerland, but his plans were quickly thwarted. While the Italian Social Republic collapsed, Mussolini decided to flee disguised as a soldier in a German convoy, but he would advance very little. At 6.30 in the morning on April 27, 1945, he was detected near the town of Dongo by a group of communist partisans. After an exchange of gunfire and despite the Germans having better weapons, they agreed to negotiate since they were aware that the guerrillas knew the mountain pass as well and also expected reinforcements. Thus, the partisans allowed the withdrawal of Hitler's soldiers in exchange for the surrender of all Italians. And it was at that moment that they recognized Mussolini among them. That night, the worn-out leader of Italy and his lover, Clara Patacci, were executed. On April 28th, 
the bodies were transferred to Milan with nobody allowed to approach them. But on the 29th, they were taken to Piazzale Loreto, and there Mussolini's body was brutally stoned, kicked, and shot by the people. Some even urinated on him. After the assaults, his face was completely disfigured. To publicly confirm the dictator's death to the population, the police service composed of partisans and firefighters hung Mussolini, Pitacci, and other fascist leaders upside down in the middle of the square. Following the Allied advance and Mussolini's violent death, along with all kinds of subsequent humiliations, Hitler knew he had no future. Thus, as the troops of his enemies advanced further, he was closer to making a drastic decision. On the morning of April 30, 1945, Adolf Hitler began his work routine deep in the bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery building. However, he knew time was running out and if he didn't do something soon, Soviet soldiers patrolling the streets of Berlin would find him. Ten days before that morning, the German president had emerged from hiding for his birthday and inspected, with a trembling hand, a group of boys sent to defend the city against the Red Army in the name of racial superiority philosophy. But what he saw displeased him. He knew that only a miracle could save him. On April 29th, he completed his testament and married his lifelong lover, Eva Brown. Before lunchtime, he received news that Benito Mussolini had been captured and learned the details of how his body and Clara Patacci's had ended. He realized that this ignoble end could also be his and the woman he loved. According to testimonies from that time, it is known that the pressure of his last days was affecting the German leader too much. You can hear about it in the words of an expert in the following interview. Hitler was in a very fragile mental and physical state um, in the bunker in which he had been living for weeks. There was no sunlight in the bunker. And Hitler began to neglect his physical appearance. Returning to the morning of April 30th, Hitler was informed that probably that night his government would run out of ammunition so the fighting in Berlin would end in, at most, 24 hours. Around 1 on p.m., the couple, along with the kitchen staff and two secretaries, had lunch. By 2.30, Adolf and Eva Hitler said goodbye to their employees and entered their personal study. They lived as husband and wife for only 40 hours and together decided to take their lives by taking cyanide. Furthermore, the dictator shot himself in the temple to hasten his imminent end. After a while, an aide entered the anteroom of Hitler's rooms, where he could smell the gunpowder and remove the bodies. Hitler knew that if his remains remained intact, his enemies could do anything with his memory, so he gave clear instructions before leaving. Their bodies were taken to the garden behind the Reich Chancellery, where they were placed in the crater of a bomb, doused with gasoline and set on fire. Although they were burned outdoors, according to eyewitnesses, the large amount of fuel applied between 4.00 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. reduced the remains to something between charred bones and piles of ashes that crumbled to the touch. With the advance of Allied troops and the death of these two fascists, World War II came to an end. War is over. Six years of suffering, sacrifice, and death. With the end of this bloody war, we come to the end of this video. After exploring the lives of these five presidents, it can be seen that the way they departed from this world is nothing more than a reflection of how they acted in life for their countries. If you're interested in learning about the deaths of great leaders of World War II, don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel. We hope you enjoyed today's video and invite you to our next installment of Military History. Thank you very much for staying until the end.